and uh, the agenda is being projected on the screen. And today we're going to review the action items, uh, touch on the latest on draft JAGS, MPLS, MA header. And uh, their, the relationship of this draft with other drafts, I'm not sure why, maybe there's a typo here with respect to this one. I couldn't change uh, it before the meeting, but it's not related directly to no, uh, it's clearly a typo. It should be uh, draft DOM, I think. Yeah, there are. Yeah, we can we can pin pin them uh, uh, yeah. up from the from the documents review that we have. Uh, yeah, here. I think we can pull it up. Yeah. So this. Let me go back to the agenda. We'll correct that typo. And uh, the last thing that we're going to go over today is, uh, you know, if there's anything else uh, anyone wants to put on the agenda. Maybe we should say something about the uh, outstanding polls. Oops. Okay. Because I logged in, it doesn't. Uh, okay. <clears throat> That too. There is one uh, alien is handling and on the forwarder, and then there is another one on text for the framework. Okay. I added that. Yep. Good. All right. Let's jump on to the, the, the action items that we have. And let me just edit. Oh. Okay. All right. So the action item, the first one that we are tracking is uh, an evaluation for competing proposals. Um, today, uh, the last we recorded on this um, was uh, an email that Loa uh, to send out, and I think he sent it out. Uh, yep, I did. So, in terms of update on this, is this something related to the update that we'll have today? Uh, basically, item number two on the agenda. Um, I think we should discuss that uh, as part of the discussion on the um, on the on the on the uh, draft gags. Uh, because uh, a little bit into that discussion, we actually will see. Uh, how much support it has and uh, where we can go. But uh, combining uh, authors and contributors it seems to have a pretty good support. And uh, it might be that this reporting we were requesting is no, no longer necessary. Or for draft JAGS, we can actually view it as one of those reports. Okay, uh, anything else? I did mention that it will be discussed as part of number two on the agenda. Um, okay, the next action item we have is a discussion on the ordering. There was a, there was text that was proposed in the framework draft. Uh, that's the latest that I have. Anything uh, besides that? Let's see, there is a poll, of poll going on that we started. About the ordering? Um, not, oh yeah, so now we're getting close to trying to define what is what here, but we have some text for the framework that will affect what we can carry in uh, for an action uh, network action. Right. And I That's think 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that was the 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 text that was reviewed last time about ordering. I think uh, there was some text in the framework draft. I remember we reviewed it. Um, yeah. Okay, anything else on this? Anyone wants to? I don't see anyone raising their hand, so. Looks like the update is good. Um, okay, action item number three is a long standing action item. Um, the latest we had on it is uh, me to send out an email. And that was done, uh, but uh, no one responded at this time. So it is not something I consider m a related at this time. At least I don't consider this draft directly impacting m a but um, if you think this is stopping our work, uh, or slowing it down, then we need to raise that flag. Okay, I don't know if anybody wants to update on this. No. Oh, yeah, I see Greg raising his hand. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah. Um. Um. I don't know. It might be I'm uh, misinterpreting, but I think that uh, this uh, first nibble might be related uh, uh, with the uh, PSD uh, encapsulation. So that 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 might be their uh, relationship between their first nibble draft and uh, M and A work. Right. Uh, yeah, and and I wish the authors were um, uh, proactive to update us on this. Um, yeah, but, I, I'm 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 one I'm one of the coffers, but uh, I don't have it. Hold the pen. Okay, thank you. Uh, Noah, I see you're raising your hand. Yeah, question back to, to Greg. Uh, do you mean that they are related because they actually appear at the same place in the, uh, or actually just after the labor stack? Well, is that again, that's something that uh, definitely for um, open for the discussion, but um i was uh imagining that uh assuming that uh as we go to um discuss uh start discussion of uh uh post tech data uh encapsulation so then the question of the first nibble might come up i'm afraid you're correct though so... but I have it. I also one of the courses that I should have uh, been working on this, but I haven't. Um, uh, so I should probably take a, a spin and see if we can do anything uh, for response. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, we, we, you know, if we can take it offline a little bit, prepare something for the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I have a question. So. Applications have been adding um, 
you know, uh, data after the stack without the presence of this draft. It's not clear if this is going to govern any new applications from um, adding uh, anything after the stack or um, is this a gating draft? Um, okay. That's, the, that's my question. Uh, I don't see that as a gating, but um, well, first, when we adding uh, something after the stack, I think that we need to be cognizant of uh, interpretation given uh, assigned to the first nibble on existing platforms. The one, go ahead. Uh, so there is some, something that is kind of not making me feel uh, comfortable by now saying that this is not uh, uh, slowing down progress for m and a because uh, uh, both first enable and post stack data are post stack stack and they actually appear in the same region in mm -hmm. the packet and and the um, uh, draft itself talk about post stack data so we need we need to be clear on it before we actually say it is not slowing yeah i i agree with well so, okay um, we have proposals um you know for post stack data um, i'm going to speak without raising hand here i'm assuming i'm updating this action item we have a proposal for post stack data i'm going to ask you know those authors do they have a dependency on this draft? Um, I know, for example, but not um, a comprehensive list of authors. Why you is one of them. So maybe if you remember, does it have any dependency on this draft? The PSD proposal. If uh, not, I'm fine. We can uh, take it after. Uh, I was just curious yeah. to answer that question. That uh, is this I, going? I, I think that it might be a little bit different um, that we we need to look at existing proposals and see if uh, they might uh, the encapsulation might turn out so that the first nibble might be misinterpreted. I understand. Okay. Why you go ahead? Yeah, uh, in our proposal, we have a reserve the first label and uh, to uh, state that uh, it should avoid some existing uh, well-known value has been used. And uh, in the future, there might be um, some specific values assigned for this case or, or else, but uh, we will follow that. Mm, okay. Um, so you're you're all okay, okay. I see. So, um, I think what uh, how you is actually saying that his or the uh, extension header proposal does not touch the first nibble. I don't think so. He said that. He said right, he's right. That's right. Huh? We don't. I we don't touch it. Enable? We just keep it there. Huh? And uh, yeah. Okay, okay. I am confused. Uh, uh, why you? You said you are assigning a first nibble. No. No, we didn't say that. No, we we just uh, reserved that uh, first nibble. Um, so we we yeah we didn't give it uh, uh, any specific value yet, but we do. We are aware of uh, that. Uh, uh, that in some cases this uh, uh, first level has some special meaning, right? For example, it can be uh, value four or six, and some other well-known values. Okay. But we we reserve that first level. Um, so in case in the future uh, we decide to assign a specific value for that or uh, use something else, then we we can still support that. So we didn't touch it right now. Yeah. 
touch it, but you did request the first nibble, right? We don't use that yet. Did you request the first nibble or no? Request, what, no, what do you we mean? Didn't. Uh, yeah, no, we did happened. not. We did not. Okay, so what is the reserved, um, reserving so first nibble? I, I think, I have my hand raised. Can I have the can I have the floor? Okay, I just yeah, I'll give you a chance, but I want to make sure that uh, should I delete what I wrote or no? Maybe I will delete it and start all over again, uh, and then go ahead. Let, let, let's see. We I think we have one thing in the draft that is not correct. It should not be reserved because that has a specific meaning in the Ayana. That's not what we have here. We should treat it the same way as we treat this S bit. And uh, I think that it was created the same with Sacrosanth. Uh, we don't touch it at all. And that is what we're doing today. If we need a first neighbor in the future, we can do that from, uh, on the same basis when anyone else can uh, create the first neighbor. Uh, but it will be hard. Uh, we are running out of them. So uh, what the, what's in the draft today is that the first nibble and the S bit are sacrosanct. We are not touching them. That's right. Uh, can, yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. Laura for yeah. clarification. Yeah. Okay, there is no specific first nibble needed for PSD, MNA PSD. Right. Not for not for extension handers now. Sorry, you have Rakesh in queue. I'm sorry. What? Oh, Rakesh. Yeah. Right. Let me finish this mm -hmm. sentence and and yeah. Um, required for. Okay, Rakesh, go ahead. Just uh, my perspective on it is that uh, if you look at the analogy, um, you have a tire and steering wheel and engine for a car, and um, building a tire doesn't depend on the steering wheel and you know an engine and <laughs> steering wheel. But uh, in order for you know to drive the car, you need all the pieces, right? Uh, so there is no dependency in that sense. But uh, if I want to uh, encode a packet, uh, I will need the three pieces together to be able to uh, build the packet. So. Just my perspective on it. So the draft can progress on their own independently, as long as I'm able to put the pieces together to build that car. Thank you. Uh, I I am pro this I this approach that may may still be required. Uh, realizing the MNA solution. But this this is contradicting the previous sentence, at least in my reading. Uh, okay. Um, I, I, the reason I'm adding this, uh, I'm logging these points here is we need to decide, um, you know, this is going to slow down progressing other drafts. So there is a chain of dependency uh there and if so then we have to escalate um, um the importance of this uh, because i see that uh, you know not much progress has been made since uh, april uh, okay rakesh you're back go ahead yeah no just to say it, uh, that i don't think there is a dependency uh, of one draft to the other uh, to block in, to block in that sense but just that and that they can progress uh, in parallel that's what i was trying to say but in the end like all of the pieces would you know fit together yeah yeah that's what i wrote all right okay Okay, that was the last uh, action item. And um, let's put the changes, save them, and go back to the agenda. So the second item is the update on this 
draft. Uh, not sure who from the authors will be uh, giving us an uh, update. Let me see if... Uh, so, Jagan, uh, you have raised your hand. Uh, yes, Tarek. Uh, uh, I've, Sorry, I've... Tarek. I, I would like to start uh, as a, yes, as a chair. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Loa, go ahead, and then we'll give a chance to Jagan to go. Yeah. Uh, we received this draft early in the week, or so maybe in the weekend, but I don't know really. Uh, I read it. I read most of it, but not all. Uh, I triggered uh, the, my, my co-chairs to read, and uh, Stuart did a good review, and I think I agree with most of his comments. Though I will have additional comments, and they will be kind of nitty gritty share comments and a couple of uh, larger comments on, on, on this draft. But uh, I think that the take the what what I what I kind of felt when we discussed this on the uh, share coordination meeting was that uh, uh, we were fairly optimistic that we actually could progress this draft towards working group last call quite soon. Um, and I would like to thank the people that actually been involved in this work and actually making making progress. Thanks. Thank you. I'm done. Okay, thanks. Uh, Jagan, I think uh, either you want to go back and update us. Sure, uh, sure Tarek. Um, we put together a couple of slides um, and then I can share and go over. Okay. Can I share my screen? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm trying to stop sharing. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, could you see my screen? Uh, it's too small on my, okay. I think I need to increase the mm -hmm. size. Can you go in a different mode? You are in uh, presenter. Okay. Uh, try see? a different mode. Yeah, this is better. I'm okay with it. I, you know, the rest of the people, are you? No, this the other one is better than this. Okay. We're seeing yeah. the presenter screen, not the the actual presentation display. So if you want to switch screens, that would help. Can you go on full mode, uh, full screen? Um, let me just turn on. It's the button on the, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, th this is good. This is good? Okay. Okay, so uh, can I start now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, so um, uh, we started with a uh, few authors and no, like, and then we started collaborating with other people. And uh, so these are our um, authors, co-authors and contributors of our draft. Um, uh, thanks uh, everybody. Um, I'm going to uh, um, discuss uh, more on the uh, MNA encoding model, which we uh, came up with. So these are the acronyms. I'm just going to skip these things. So um, the agenda, I'm going to skip agenda. And let's go to the scope of this um, presentation. So uh, <clears throat> here the, uh, we're going to provide a solution uh, for uh, MNA encoding format uh, carried in the label stack. Um, so uh, this, um, this draft uh, is based on the uh, MNA requirement mentioned in the draft and the uh, MRA framework uh, just mentioned uh, mentioned in this draft. Um, so as uh, a high level solution, right? So this MNA, uh, this specific draft uh, contains uh, two main parts. So uh, one is the uh, network action substack header. So uh, which specifies the uh, scope and the uh, length of the uh, network action, action uh, substack header. And the next one is the uh, network action encoding itself. So uh, this uh, network action encoding is based on the uh, TLV format. Um, here, um, uh, in our further discussion, we're going to describe about uh, a type as uh, opcode, and the length is represented as a uh, network action length, and values the uh, ancillary data 
or which uh, the network action needs to uh, execute. Uh, this is an optional uh, information that could that could be uh, passed as, uh, that could be uh, encoded as part of the packet. So these are the two uh, main blocks of our uh, draft. Let's go into the uh, network action subtract header. So uh, this this is how the uh, network action subtract uh, subtract header uh, looks like. Um, uh, the first uh, uh, the first important thing is the uh, NASI network action uh, subtract indicator. So this is a uh, this is a new uh, BSPL which will be allocated uh, for this purpose to indicate that this is uh, MNA subtract. NA subtract. Um, and the next one is the uh, NA um, SL. So this is the uh, four bit value uh, which indicates the uh, length of the current um, uh, network action subtract. So the maximum it can go is like uh, it can carry uh, 16 bits uh, uh, of uh, the uh, label stack LSEs. And the, and the third uh, important thing uh, uh, with respect to this network action subtract is the uh, NASS scope. So each uh, NASS has its own scope. So uh, according to the uh, framework draft, uh, we support uh, three different scopes. One is the uh, ingress to egress, another one is the uh, hop by hop, and third one is the uh, select uh, scope. So the uh, uh, in this case, the two bits value is going to indicate uh, what type of uh, scope uh, it is going to it is, it is specific subtract is going to carry. Um, and uh, and the uh, and the last uh, the last bit uh, which is which will be used for this subtract uh, encoding is the p bit. So the p flag indicates that. Uh, is there in, uh, the presence of the uh, post stack data um, in the specific uh, uh, packet or not? So this this bit is going to indicate uh, the presence of the post stack data. Um, so now let's uh, we talked about the scope, right? So let's let's discuss more about the scope of uh, the NAS substack. So as we described before, um, the two bit value which which has been mentioned here, the HBH. Uh, is, uh, for example, you know, like um, I could carry, uh, uh, I, I want to carry um, some uh, network action uh, with uh, hop by hop as a scope, um, select as a scope, and um, uh, e, uh, I2E as a scope. So then actually, this is how the uh, stack looks like. So there will be like uh, three copies of uh, NASS in the packet. So, um, um, so the one, the first topmost will be the uh, hop by hop. Um, and uh, next one is the select and last will be the uh, i2e so uh, this has been done this way to help the uh, intermediate nodes to uh, easily process the uh, um, the hop by hop uh, nss uh, then uh, i2e but that's a reason no, like uh, we, want, we want to keep this as a order <clears throat> when, when we encode this when, when, when we encode this uh, substack uh, with respect to the scope <clears throat> So uh, now let's go into the uh, network action uh, encoding. So as a network action encoding, so the the, the blues are the knowledge like, uh, uh, or the new stuff which are, which has been uh, used to encode the network actions. So the main, as I told you before, like the main um, the main uh, it, it sorry it, it it follows the TLU format, and the uh, and the, the type is going to be represented by the NA opcode. The NA opcode is a eight bit value. Uh, the, um, the some of the uh, NA of code will be uh, reserved for uh, initial framework purposes, and then uh, rest of things will be like uh, will be allocated as part of the uh, regular IANA um, registry allocation process. And here, um, uh, apart from the NASL, right? So we um, since actually we are encoding the uh, ancillary data also as part of uh, uh, the specific uh, network action encoding. So we need a length for uh, the data of what we encode. So this contains the length, uh, the TL, uh, the length of the um, network action. So here actually we have a two-bit uh, length field, um, which uh, which is going to uh, say how much uh, LSEs, uh, how many LSEs uh, the specific uh, opcode can carry. Um, so the uh, the last one is the ancillary data. Uh, the ancillary data is a uh, value, uh, the information, additional information which uh, the um, network action um, uh, needs uh, needs to process. Uh, <clears throat> so this is an optional uh, data which will be carried. Um, um, in in some cases uh, we don't need uh, ancillary data. So those will, those will be 
uh, encoded as part of the flag based uh, NAIs. So, so um, let's move to the next one. So now actually we saw all the uh, uh, building uh, blocks of our uh, MNA um, encoding formats. Um, so now uh, let's go into a certain uh, reserved and um, some of the examples, uh, uh, constructs of uh, the uh, blocks, building blocks. So uh, the here, um, as I told you before, like, uh, um, uh, uh, okay, so now actually the, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the uh, opcode one. So here actually we reserve the opcode one to uh, to indicate, you know, like uh, the uh, post stack network actions start after the uh, bottom of the stack. Uh, so th these are the, you know, like um, reserved thing, uh, reserved uh, opcodes that we have defined, but it is not necessarily that uh, they, should, they should be used, this should be must, uh, must be used on. So this, this this is specifically to uh, facilitate to tell the uh, routers that uh, where my uh, PSD data starts from the bottom of my stack. In some cases, um, they might uh, need to start uh, in different uh, other than the next next to the uh, uh, end of the stack. So this this is going to facilitate uh, and give an opportunity to uh, position the uh, PSD anywhere in the stack anywhere after the stack. The second uh, reserved opcode, which we reserved it for uh, to carry the uh, flag-based NAIs, which doesn't need any ancillary data. And uh, the, the third one is uh, another another opcode we have reserved it to uh, for carrying uh, some of the uh, cases where it carries, you know, like uh, flag with the uh, NAIs. Um, so in this here, actually, we are debating. You know, we need to reserve our application can reserve their own. Um, uh, uh, their own opcodes and then go with that. So the fourth value, uh, what we define is to carry uh, uh, carry the uh, PSD NAI. Um, so uh, basically, in some of the cases, you know, like uh, if you want to order, uh, if you want to um, process the uh, ordering, ordering or not keep the ordering of um, ordering between the uh, in stack and post stack data. So this is the uh, this is the reserved opcode uh, which which could be used to uh, specify that uh, we need to process this uh, PST before processing this IST. And the last one is for you know uh, for extending this opcode values. Um, so yeah, so today we have a uh, two fifty four uh, two fifty four opcodes can be assigned, but if tomorrow if you want to extend this uh, opcode. Uh, still, actually, we keep uh, we keep a door door open to extend the uh, the upcode value more than two fifty five. So that is where the uh, value two fifty five upcode is reserved for. And uh, the network option. These are the uh, ordering examples um, which we want to mention it here um, to give some idea like uh, how the data could be carried. So here uh, in this example in the in the figure nine um, we have. Uh, uh, two opcodes getting carried. So one opcode two, as you know that, is a reserved opcode. So where it carries the flag based NIS. And uh, the, uh, there's a application, some application needs uh, some answer data to be carried with that. So in this case example, um, then a opcode five has been um, allocated for that application. So he carries the data, answer data, 20 bits of uh, what of answer data for his, uh, uh, for his processing. And that's how the uh, packet looks like. Uh, in this, the uh, in the figure ten, in the figure ten actually like um, if you see right. Uh, so um, uh, sorry, sorry, this is actually a kind of ordering I'm talking about. So um, in this the figure ten actually uh, here uh, uh, we we want to uh, we have we carry the uh, flag based NAIs, but uh, in some some cases right. So if you want to order the uh, flag based NAIs uh, with respect to the um, the insulin data itself right. So then, actually, we can we can specify uh, what flag of uh, opcode two has to has to be processed first, and then uh, opcode five uh, is going to process second, and then uh, third one is going to be like opcode two, that's a flag based, but with a different uh, a different flag is going to be uh, different NA is going to be processed at the end, and the and the uh, and the third one is the uh, ordering among the in stack and uh, post stack uh, data. Uh, so here actually like um, um, the post stack and in stack. So if you, there is some dependency of a post stack uh, NAIs needs to be executed before the in stack NAIs. 
So then actually like we can use the reserved um, uh, code four and tell that uh, I need to execute this in AI six. And then actually like, uh, and then in AI up code five, which is going to be an Instack um, in AI. So this is how actually we can specify the order of ordering of the uh, in a, in a network action uh, execution. By the way, these are all constructs, you know, like um, uh, it is um, up to the, you know, like um, uh, the application, they can um, mix and match and in different ways. Um, yeah, so the uh, backward compatibility. Um, so as we know that, you know, like um, since actually we're creating a new uh, m and um, uh, label, so we need some, we need some uh, control plane uh, uh, signaling to say that um, the egress node uh, supports this m and and um, and stuff like that. Um, so the second one is that uh, the penultimate hop node uh, with that TTL propagation uh, behavior does not corrupt the uh, NAS encoding encoding uh, parameters as uh, they added as added in the second uh, LSE. Um, so probably we can talk uh, this later. We'll, we'll be discussing things. So, uh, so the, the BSPL, right? So we have a TTL and TC field. So we don't want to disturb it because, you know, like for if the, if the penultimate uh, node is a legacy node, uh, then with the, with the current uh, uh, TTL uh, modes, uh, there's a possibility that uh, they could overwrite the um, uh, TTL value. So that might corrupt the uh, MNA encoding. So we don't want to use that and make the backward compatibility uh, enabled. And third one is the penultimate pop uh, does not okay uh, that's what actually like uh, discussing and fourth one is the uh, ecmp behavior um, is not adversely uh, affected by the mna encoding so uh, mm, here the assumption is that you know like uh, the hashing of the uh, ecmp uh, may be uh, may be used may, may use the uh, label field in the lse stack um, so the um, uh, the label field in LSE in uh, NAS, NAS, NASS do not change for a flow. Uh, if at all, we, if there is a requirement to change for a flow, um, like we have a TTL field also contains some part of the uh, ancillary data. So that's why actually we can change those um, uh, those bits uh, uh, when, there, when there is a need for changing the uh, MNA information uh, for the same flow. And the fifth one is the label field uh, in LSEs, uh, in the NASS, do not align with, uh, do not alias with the existing uh, reserved BSPL. Um, so, for example, let's take uh, today. Today we have um, entropy uh, label, the reserved label for entropy case indicator. Um, so we made sure that uh, when we uh, when we do this encoding, um, that is uh, uh, even uh, when we do this encoding, the data could be uh, any value which is not in our control. So we made sure that uh, when we do this uh, formatting, encoding format, uh, different encoding format, uh, it, it doesn't uh, alias with the um, uh, the uh, existing uh, BSPL, and uh, the so that the legacy node doesn't you know like um, misunderstand it for uh, the BSPL and do some actions uh, erroneously. And and the last one is the uh, it can coexist with the current um, uh, cache. Um, because it is actually an opcode code specified, uh, uh, we can we can specify you know like uh, where the um, um, post stack data could be encoded. And uh, yeah, so so that's just advantages. I just want to skip this one. You know, like probably can take a look. Oh uh, yeah, so um, yeah, if you guys are interested, probably we can go through the um, um, go through the examples. Uh, Based on you know, like the questions, uh, so that it'll be uh, easier for others to understand as well. So thank you. We we have a question from Noah. Um, okay. Sure. Okay, so let's see. I have a few things. Where did I put them? There. Uh, first of all, I, I would really like to call the. Uh, a newly assigned B uh, base special purpose label for M and A label. I don't really like a nasty label. I like, can't really. I don't. Just me feel queer. Uh, but uh, 
wouldn't be any uh, drawbacks to actually call it an M and A label because I think that was it is. You're talking uh, the BSP and yeah, but the B, B yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't like the name, and I really think uh, we need to call it M and A label because uh, NISI is kind of a bit uh, deep into the specification. Uh, I think that people are starting to see that we're doing something uh, that is M and A, and it should be the M and A label. Uh, personal opinion. Uh, second question is on uh, on select can select uh, select more than one node or is it just pointing out one single node uh, generally the select uh, could be uh, multiple nodes um, uh, select is uh, currently under discussion we need to add more meat to that okay yeah uh, so, something that could go into that discussion, would the deselect scope be uh, useful? Saying, I want this to be processed by everyone but this single node. Um, you don't need to answer now, yeah, but okay. yes, take, take, take the questions uh, and kind of came back. Uh, I would like to look at the opcode. Uh, one slash two again. I think it was one of the early slides. Yeah, that's one. Yes. yes. Uh, if you look at the post stack part, uh, so after offset, there is a post stack network action, it should actually be ancillary data, shouldn't it? Uh, so and the first four bit there are the um, uh, first nibble, isn't it? Yeah, correct. So like uh, we didn't specifically specify uh, the whole format. So- uh, yeah, But you need to, okay. you can't use those four labels. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that was, okay, thanks. We update that. Yeah, update yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then I have a general question. Can an op? I think we have answered, but I want to hear it clearly. Can one op code appear multiple times in one in the same packet? Uh, that is right, uh, especially for ordering. Right, um, we can have uh, yeah. same op code one. Uh, sorry, two can appear twice. Okay, so that's uh, and it can actually be that you do uh, opcode one, two, one, two. Uh, just an example, as an example, I don't know what it is, probably not with uh, no data, but you can uh, interfoliate uh, ISD and PSD, yeah, uh, and do that, yeah, and uh, that's the way you fix the ordering, that's right, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. So, so Lowa, the thing is that uh, since this is a TLD, right? So uh, uh, it can be placed anywhere. You know, like uh, any order and multiple times too. That 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 is the thing actually you want to bring it. Okay. Uh, you will get a uh, review from me. Uh, my normal kind of nitty gritty share comments on this, but uh, I'm. I'm, I'm still on the same page that uh, Stuart was in his comments that uh, this is probably uh, ready to go to uh, uh, working group adoption. Also, I think it's it's good enough. Thanks. I'm done. You're done. Okay, Greg, you're next. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh... I really appreciate the work that offers put uh, into this uh, proposal. Um, I think that, I, well, I, I agree with the question about their uh, select. Uh, without explicit 
correctly listing, identifying this target nodes, uh, it does look like this is more of a management plane function rather than data plane. And uh, in that case, then might be the scope, um, explicit scope identification might not be needed because it might be just their uh, actions uh, could be uh, implicitly defining or when we define an action or someone defines an action that um, also defines the scope of the action. Another question I have is the space allotted for uh, opcode uh, field. Um, I understand that you want to have, or there is an interest and desire benefit to be uh, forward looking and have enough space. But at the same time, uh, you define only a few values as a fixed, and uh, might be the better approach would be is uh, reducing the space uh, for this field and then um, defining some extension mechanism. So the mechanism is similar to what's been done with the special purpose label. Um, and one more question about their penultimate uh, hop popping and uh, actually the case when the MNA label or this new base special purpose label is exposed. So um, I, I, as I understand correctly that, that the whole MNA um, substack will be removed if they're uh, Base special purpose label is exposed. So these are the three cases. You know, like since actually you brought up uh, this point of uh, exposing the MNA, uh, the MNA label, right? So this, this is one of the case where you know, like I have a legacy node. Um, so here actually, since it's a legacy node, we don't know uh, what is the MNA. So he has to send the uh, MNA. At the top of the stack to the egress node. So this uh, I think we need to support this one via backward compatibility. In other cases, as you said, <clears throat> so if you say like uh, my penultimate hop is uh, um, node, the node three is the uh, um, uh, which uh, which knows about uh, the MNA, then actually he can uh, pop pop both the information and then send it out. So. Um well i i'm i'm quite skeptical that the legacy node that does not understand this uh mna label will forward the packet because that would be violation uh, another thing is that and that's something that probably we'll need to discuss uh further not today is if a system if a node that understands mna supports mna and MNA label is exposed. So, what happens with the post tag data? Okay. So, so, so that, 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 that's, that, that's this case. Third, third case we have it. So, uh, in some cases, right? So, like uh, we have a post uh, post tag uh, data, mm -hmm. and then we want to be processed by the uh, this egress node, right? So they're actually like uh, the head end is going to encapsulate uh, the uh, the uh, exp null label, so that uh, when the packet uh, receives on the uh, egress node, um, is going to is going to decap the MNA and process uh, the uh, post app data and push it, push the packet out. But by processing post tag data, you mean remove post tag data? Yes, so uh, it's going to remove the post tag data, right? Because uh, the packet is going out of this egress uh, packet is going to be a IP packet. Uh, well, okay, it might not be IP packet, but uh, but okay, but what is if the transit node exposes the uh, MNA label because it might happen with their uh, segment routing. Yeah, so that, that, that specific case, right, as I told uh, Rova, right? So we are discussing on that one. Um, probably I will get back to you once we discuss. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, there's a section in our uh, draft, but uh, we haven't filled it, filled the meat. Okay, thanks, Greg. Uh, Tony, you're next in the queue. Thank you. Um, so to answer the question about how select is used. Uh, so the proposal on the table, as I understand it at least, is that anytime the MNA uh, header label for uh, select scope comes to the top of stack, that node would then evaluate that sub stack and then remove it. And by doing it that way, um, a select uh, only occurs at one place. And so a uh, stack might have to include multiple select statements or uh, sub stacks if it really needed uh, that to occur, act on multiple nodes. Is that clear? Uh, I think that I'm sorry, jumping. But I, I think that that still uh, open question about post tech data. So what happens with the post tech data with the select option select scope? So the sub stack can indicate that there's post stack data that's relevant, and the node should go off and uh, evaluate the post stack data too. Oof. Well, it's not a requirement. If there's no post stack data for a select then you just remove the p bit and this, we should understand that there's nothing to evaluate for that sub stack yeah but okay i probably need to, to think about it some more thanks okay okay thank you tony i guess you're done okay rakesh you're next uh, hi, yeah. so just one comment about uh, the, where, the, where the state, um, the status of this work uh, is that uh, we have um, one more iteration that we like to do. Uh, there were some uh, comments and in, in work that we have not completed um, uh, in order to make this public, uh, but we like to do that. Um, I, Maybe it might be good if we do it before the working group adoption poll, just to avoid, um, um, you know, trivial uh, review comments, because this is something uh, it's in it's in work. So we should post that and then do the adoption. But that's my personal opinion. Okay, thank you. I, I have, uh, you know, I'm next after Rakesh. So um, my question uh, to Jagan is about the case where the penultimate pops the MNA and the respective data. Um, in this case, maybe the actions are relevant to the egress. So, how do we avoid that? By this one. Imposing, this one. But, but but then you're forcing to Im impose the explicit null uh, from the head end, yes. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is uh, the best way, but okay, uh, thanks. Um, Loa, uh, you're next. Yes, to Rakesh. Yeah, you're right. Address all comments you have before you say you're ready to work in group for working group adoption. I think what uh, Stuart and I said uh, uh, was that uh, this is good enough to actually start that process and actually aim for working group adoption. So. And I think we're on the same page. Okay. Yeah, thanks. And I think I, I'm in the queue. Um, is that Tarek? Uh, I can. You, you, you're you next. Go ahead. Yeah. So I think, uh, Tarek, uh, regarding the question that you asked about a uh, node that removes the NSS, uh, uh, it has, like in this, uh, ex in any example you take, the node where uh, MNA is exposed needs to remove it. Uh, and could it could be egress node because you you cannot egress node cannot forward it to the CE or CE right, so as soon as it's it's exposed it has to remove the MNA stack um, you just can't forward it so you, you don't have a way around it uh, and that's why if you want um, it to be processed on egress and there is no VPN label or there is no to VPN label. Then only way to make sure it gets exposed on the egress is using explicit null, right? 
Um, I understand if you receive the packet with the top label is MNA, you have to process it and, and pop it and as well. Uh, the concern is while the, you know, probably the penultimate did not receive the packet with the MNA at the top. Uh, it will have the uh, VP uh, the transport label coming in. Uh, so that was what I was thinking, Rakesh. Yeah, we can have some more offline discussion, but uh, the same code that runs on penalty mate runs on egress. You don't know what your role is. So uh, uh, if we implement and say, well, if you do a lookup and don't remove the MNA label, uh, well, what if it happens to be egress? Then if it doesn't remove it, you end up on CE, that MNA uh, stack, right? So that's the issue. Okay, um, there isn't anyone, anyone in the queue anymore. Um, if I go back, are you uh, done, uh, I guess, Jagan, on this? Or you... Oh, yes, uh, done. Yeah, thank you. All right, so we're done on that. And the next item on the agenda is an update on the outstanding polls. Um, you, you own that, uh, Loa, go ahead. Now I'm unmuted. Okay. Uh, we have two polls outstanding. One that Alien is handling on forward, the forwarder characteristics of different implementations. Uh, I know that Alien has a few responses, but would like to have more. Uh, please respond if you can. And as Adrian said in his mail, uh, anyone can respond uh, and he will coordinate if there is more than one fr from the same company. Uh, as a bit of information, uh, there is a testing institute in uh, Berlin, I think, EANCT. Uh, that has been doing quite a bit of MPLS testing. Uh, I sent the poll to them, and I don't know if they responded, but uh, we, we might get some information from them also. Uh, the second poll is on uh, a text for the framework that I sent out about uh, 10 days ago. Please look at that and respond also. Thank you. I'm done. Okay, thank you, Loa. Okay, I think uh, that's it for the agenda for today. I don't have any other items. Um, so if not, nothing else pops up, um, I can give you the remaining time for the day and Thank you for joining. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll stop the recording here and.